making soap, I used pre-measured oils from Summer's Past Farms, a local small family business with an herbal soap shop. The kit also contains pre-measured lye and gloves. First, I measure out distilled water into a plastic pitcher, and in a well-ventilated room, I pour the lye in while stirring. Noxious fumes will be generated immediately for a bit, and the water will heat up exponentially to about 155 degrees. The lye is very caustic, and I always keep a bottle of vinegar and water close by to neutralize if it splashes. I also make sure there are no cats in the house because they are curious and it's just an accident waiting to happen. The lye pitcher can go into a plastic tub of water to help cool it down to between 97 degrees and 102 degrees. At this point, I take the time to line the mold and get it ready for the pouring, which will happen after a while. I then pour the pre-measured oils into a stainless steel pan, and when the lye nears the 100 degree mark, I heat the oils to between 97 and 102 degrees. When they converge on the goal temperature, I pour the lye into the oils and begin to stir for an hour. Yep, an hour. You have to stir continuously and vigorously without splashing the lye. At this point, I usually listen to an audiobook or watch something on Netflix. You will notice a significant change in appearance and viscosity, and at about an hour, you will look for a trace. During this stirring stage, the chemical process begins. I like to imagine there are little dots of energy in this liquid that need to keep moving. So it's stirring, stirring, stirring for about an hour. I measure out three ounces of avocado oil to superfat the soap to amp up the moisturizing properties of the finished product. After an hour of stirring, I look for trace and prepare to add the final ingredients. This is trace. See the difference in the color and the consistency. I'm now going to add in the Fragrance oils, bay rum, two ounces. Mm, smells good. To super fat it with some avocado oil. Some of this oil will be left in the soap itself after saponification is complete and then it will be a more a little bit more moisturizing. Putting some botanicals in, which are chamomile mixed with some of the avocado oil. This is a ground up chamomile. And I mixed it with the oil so that. Um, it would incorporate better. Ooh, there's that word again. 
it would mix in better otherwise it would just float or sink okay it's been poured into the mold now I'm going to take this piece of cardboard which will kind of work as a insulator and I'm going to tape it onto the top and then I'm going to wrap it in a down comforter that I have and it will be placed into it the oven that is turned off just for insulation uh, for 24 to 36 hours. Okay, it's been 36 hours since we put the soap into the oven. So we're gonna take it out, we're gonna look at it and make sure that it's solid. And then now comes two weeks of letting it sit and the saponification process will be complete after two, year, two years, <laughs> after two weeks, two to three weeks. And then there will be um, no more lye left. Ooh, smells good. All right, so I don't think we got pictures of actually pouring it in, but it was very, I think you guys saw stirring. And so it was um, pretty liquidy. Not liquidy now. So I'm gonna pull this out. And then you get to see what this is like. That's why I put this into the mold so it's very easy to pull mm -hmm. out. Otherwise, we'd be digging it out of there. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next step is I can cut this. I can cut it today. I'll probably wait. It's still a little tiny bit soft. I just made oh. a, a finger mark here. So I think I'll let it sit for another day or two, not with the plastic on it. We'll just let it kind of set up a little bit. You can kind of see the botanicals in it. The chamomile looks really great. Didn't just all fall to the bottom. You can kind of see yeah. it throughout. And uh, I have cutters that I'll use to cut it into uh, three bars. And then I will cut each one of those into bars. This will make about 27 usable bars, meaning these that are on the ends that you can kind of see have taken on the shape of the liner. Um, those are usable, but they're just not pretty. So it'll be 27 pretty bars, but the corners and ends are actually usable as well. We'll take more pictures then. It smells good. I wish this was smell-o-vision. <laughs> off with this one which is much smaller it's a smaller depth here to just that's a good one so this is the not pretty side so they're still usable but we just don't give them as gifts
if you found this video helpful or if there's anyone that you think would be interested in finding out about cold process soap, please share this video, like it, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. We'd love to keep you updated on our content. Please comment below if you've ever made soap, if you've ever done glycerin soaps or cold process. What, what was the plan that you did? How did you make your soap? What was your favorite scent? Share with us, we'd love to know. Coming up in future videos, uh, we will be pulling out our dahlia tubers and assessing how they did through the winter, getting them ready to pre-sprout for spring. Um, also ranunculas, uh, we'll be following up on our first planting of them for the season and so far they've been doing well. They're filling out nicely in their bed. Um, so far it's just all green, but the mice and the rabbits are staying away. We have them covered and we have mouse traps set underneath the row covers. And those will be our first spring cut flowers. So I'm excited to see those fill in and they're a beautiful color display when they come up. Thank you for following along and watching our video from Sundust Farm Homestead. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Try again. <laughs> you can't be drinking while we say it. You have to cheers us. <laughs> Was that a giggle? It sounded like it. <laughs> <laughs>